Hi, my name is Remy Young. I'm a core ballet dancer with American Ballet Theatre. I've been with the company for about five years, and I'm going to be sewing my point shoes, um, attaching ribbons and elastic, darning, making some minor adjustments. So. These are my free shoes. I switch back and forth between a couple of different makers, mostly depending on what's in stock. Um, the makers are always super busy. So I wear uh, anchors, sometimes D maker, sometimes Z, uh, but normally those three. These are the classic pros, so that means that they're slightly pitched forward on the tip a little bit just to um, get you a little bit over your box more. Um, this is a hard shank, so I like to sort of crack it where my arch is. Uh, for me personally, um, my arch falls along the seam right there. So I tend to just bend it back and forth a little bit. Um, some people like to three quarter shank, that also works. Um, but for me, normally that's where I feel the most support. I also like to squish the box a little bit just to widen the box. Sometimes um, you can fold this back and see that there's a nail in the shoe. And if this gets in the way or pokes up uh, into your heel, sometimes it can be uncomfortable. So you can peel this first layer back and then you can come in, take some scissors or like uh, another type of tool might be better for this, but scissors tend to work for me. Um, and you can just remove that nail. Then it won't poke into your heel. So I typically start with darning, um, which ends up looking like this. Uh, it just sort of alleviates um, some of the noise from the shoe, like when you're on stage, if it's a hard stage or a hard floor, um, it helps definitely the noise problem. And also it, I think, makes the shoe last a little bit longer. Um, additionally, it gives a bit of a support when you're on point, um, like I find it helps with turns and balances and things like that. So we'll start with that. Um, I take a paper towel, maybe something hard underneath since there's carpet, and a pencil, and you just sort of trace around the tip of the shoe. check to make sure it's trickling. So also another test that I like to do um, beforehand, if you set it on a flat surface, my shoes never been able to stay up. Maybe it's because they're pitched, like I mentioned, but they haven't. And then when I darn them, um, it always is nice to sort of test it and see that it holds up. Actually, I should do this shoe because those have been worn. Um, so after I darn it, it's nice to see that they can be supported um, by themselves. Okay, I'll do it later after I darn this one. Let me just test and see. So it's nice to see sometimes after you darn them that it can stay up by itself, um, just to check that the darning is supporting. So let me take, you have to be careful with this X-Acto knife. Um, it can be super sharp and you don't want to cut your fingers. And you just sort of scrape along that pencil line that you just made. And don't be afraid to, you can definitely go in deep, like you're not going to cut through the um, paper mache cardboard. Uh, you really just want to cut through the satin. But it takes a little bit more strength than you would think.
then you just want to get underneath the satin there and peel it off. You don't have to do this part, this is just how I do it. most proper to cut away from you. So you can, if there are extra strands, you can just snip them off. nice base um, for your darning. So I like to use um, these needles with a pretty large eye just because the thread that I use to darn is a little bit thicker than the normal thread that I use just for um, regular ribbons and elastic. Um, let's see, my needles. These are um, number 18 of this brand, DMC. You can find them online or wherever, your local craft store, maybe. So I just like to lick that a little bit and then you can cut a really nice even thread line to get into the eye of the needle a bit more easily. Some days are easier than others. And then for the darning, you can make it like super long because you have to go around the shoe twice or three times sometimes. And I think that this is um, thread like for crocheting. You can tell it's just like a little bit thicker, a little bit softer than normal. Just knot the end of that because it's so thick you really only need to knot it once. So yeah. Um, if you have a thimble that's great. I don't just because I've never gotten around to buying one. Um, but I use like a dish towel or a washcloth or something like that because uh, you'll see sometimes it can be kind of hard to get the needle all the way through the shoe. So I like to start um, if you're just looking at the bottom of the shoe, for some reason I always start on the right hand side of the bottom of the shoe um, and then go around from there. And so I like to go in um, maybe like a centimeter, maybe half a centimeter, I shouldn't even guess, and try to stick it all the way through the shoe. So it's going to be past the satin, more into the paper mache. And then you can take your dish towel or a thimble and press through. Sometimes you have to wiggle it a little bit. Pull it all the way up. So my good friend Leah, who's also an ABT with me, showed me how to do this this summer because I just started darning actually. Um, maybe about, I guess last spring, spring of 2020. So this is a new thing for me, but it's really changed the game. Um, and then, so the next step, so that's how you set it up for darning. The next step would be to go just next to your first, um, sorry. Okay, there we go. So 
you've got it set up for darning, the next step would be to insert the needle um, just a little bit maybe above where you did the initial stitch. Um, so same thing, take your thimble or dish towel. The hardest part is sticking it through the paper mache cardboard. Wiggle, wiggle, pull it through. So now your first darn stitch. Um, before you pull it all the way through, um, I go twice around. Um, my friend who showed me goes three times through, but twice seems to be sufficient for me. It just depends on how thick and raised you want the darn to be. Um, and then make sure that you pull through and then just tighten it. And so when you pull it tight, um, it can either go over or under and you'll see that when you're pulling it, you want the knot to go underneath. So we can get closer and show you that in a second. So just pull it tight and then you just go all the way around like that. So let's do another one. Push through. Wiggle, wiggle. This always happens. I put my thumb in there just to prevent it from going through. And then two times. Around. Around. Pull. And then, so as you're pulling it tight, this is where it can get kind of tricky. You want to make sure that it doesn't create the knot too soon. So sometimes you can assist it a little bit. All the way around. So when you get to the end, um, the little tail that you have from your initial stitch, um, you can just sort of tuck it in to the final stitches, or you can cut it off later.
And then for the very final stitch, I like to just go back in where that first initial stitch was through the same hole. Makes it a little bit easier, so you don't really need the thimble or dish rag for that one. So then after you go all the way around, uh, to finish it off and just to support um, the elevation of the stitches, um, so you can see that here's the tip of the shoe and then it's raised slightly around the tip of the shoe. So just to support that, um, I go back around and I just stick the needle through the stitch itself. So perpendicular to the stitch. And I go like two at a time or so, sometimes three. Just to reinforce stitches themselves. Kind of makes your arms wrap a lot. And then when you get to the end again, just to finish it off, you can go through, and then you can go back uh, from like back in the other direction, um, just to sort of create a knot so that it doesn't fall out. And then maybe one more. And it can just be random; it doesn't matter which stitches you reinsert the needle through. And then you just cut it off. Just to test our darning. Just for fun, you don't have to do this. And it's okay if it doesn't always balance. Um, but just to see that it's good to go, it can stand on its own, and then definitely support you when you have your foot in the shoe. Okay, so next would be Next would be the ribbons and elastic. So sometimes I will sort of cheat and use elastic as ribbons. And this is more for like photo shoots or uh, simple dances where it's not as much point work. Um, but when you're just in need of a shoe to quickly throw on and slip off. So I wear really light pro pads. Um, sometimes I wear a spacer. But what you can do, because it's just a loop, is just cross, recross underneath, and pull up. Easy. I wouldn't recommend this for um, dancers who are just beginning on point because it's not as supportive and you don't yet have the strength to hold your foot inside the shoe. Um, as I said, mostly for photo shoots or just easy dancing or when you're not really doing much point work at all. Um, yeah, it's just a fun little cheat. But for now, um, I'll show you how I would sew a shoe for a performance, which is with real actual ribbon um, and then the elastics as well. So I like to measure, I should maybe come up with a better way to do this. Sometimes I'll reuse the ribbon and I won't have to measure, but whenever I'm using fresh ribbon, um, I will measure on my actual foot to see how much I need so I'm not wasting any. So I always just fold a little loop like that um, when I'm sewing them in because in my mind it reinforces it. I'm not sure if it actually does, but it's just a habit that I've gotten into over the past few years. 
So I will place it where I want it in the shoe, then wrap it around, and then add a little extra for the knot. So we'll see it right there. And then I like to cut it on a diagonal. So we'll burn the ribbons, but it just doesn't fray as easily. And then, because we have two feet, we need two for the inside. And then outside, it's a different measurement because it's not going around quite as much. So I'll remeasure for the outside again with the loop. And then around. And we always tie our knot on the inside of the ankle. Um, my teacher would always say, my grandma would always say, right behind this ankle bone, this little uh, area in your foot, it's almost like it was meant for a point two knot um, insertion right there. So the one from the outside, you'll see it's a little bit shorter because it doesn't go around quite as much. So then, we have our ribbon set up, two which are longer, two which are shorter. Um, and then, be careful with this, maybe if you're just starting out, have someone a little bit more um, equipped with lighter usage, a little bit older maybe, to just lightly hold a flame to the edge of the ribbon so that they don't fray. Kind of dangerous sewing point shoes with these knives and fire and all of that. And this is freed ribbon as well. I'm just a freed fan, I guess. It's all I've ever worn, so. Okay, so then elastic, same thing. I don't really measure elastic, I just sort of eyeball it, but you can if you want. Um, I do crisscross the elastic. You don't have to, you can do it um, just one across, like maybe your ballet sh uh, flat shoes are like that, just one across. You can do that in point shoes, whatever you feel most secure, most comfortable. It's mostly to just um, keep it on your heel more than anything to avoid it slipping, so. I'll do four because I do the crisscross. Interestingly enough, over the pandemic, um, my foot grew half a size, so I had to go back into Freed and have um, my friend who works with me, um, Kristen. Uh, refit me completely. So fortunately I stayed in the same makers and whatnot, but it just turns out I was half a size too small. So now for each shoe, I like to set it up one long, one short, and two elastics, one long, one short, and two elastics. So then we take that beautiful shoe that we just darned, and here's the tricky part that's going to be very personal to you. I shouldn't say tricky, it's not tricky, but you just need to figure out what works for yourself and what creates the best line. Um, you don't want to have the ribbons too high up because then it sort of blocks the line of your foot. It doesn't look as elongated. Um, and that's the goal, right, is to make as long lines as possible as we can. So, of course, we want it to be supported, but not, not too um, restrictive. So inside is the longer ribbon. We, I will roll it over and fold it up like that. And then what I found that works for me is about a thumb's width below the seam of the point shoe. 
works for me. It's not too close to the front of the shoe, um, but close enough to my arch so, so that the shoe is pulled up um, in a nice place and it helps create a nice shape of my foot. But yeah, very personal, whatever works for you. So then, I'll take my needle again, I'll get rid of that thick thread that we used for darning, and I'll move to this slightly thinner thread. Some people use floss, um, that is great. Uh, it's not as thin as just normal everyday thread is, it's a bit thicker, uh, just to reinforce that, but... You could use the darning thread, I guess, but it just seems a little bit too thick for my taste. So then once again, you can make this super, oh, got an extra thread. You can make this super long, because we're gonna use it a lot. And then this is like, I don't really know how to explain this, but the way that I knot it, is you take the end, put it on the needle, wrap it around the needle like three or four times, and then slide it all the way down to the bottom, and then pull it tight, and it creates a really nice thick knot right at the end of the thread. So whatever works for you. Um, as I mentioned, I rolled that up. I think this initially started because when my mom was showing me how to sew point shoes, she recommended that you sew it once this way. And you can totally do this if it's a performance and you don't want your ribbons to pop off and you just want to be super sure that your ribbons are going to be secure. Um, sewing it once around in a little rectangle that way and then folding it up and sewing it again. But when you're performing, and ABT, for example, has an eight week long season at the Met. Um, we have to sew shoes so frequently that it almost doesn't even matter how secure it is. It does matter how secure it is, but because we're sewing shoes so frequently, we just wanna make it as quick as possible. So we definitely make sure that it's secure, but efficiently secure so we can just get through them, whip it out in 30 minutes or so, and then be done. Um, but that being said, today I'm just going to show you my quick version, but if you are worried about the security, you can definitely do it twice over. So I will do my ribbon and elastic at the same time because I don't like the elastic to show um, underneath the ribbon because it can be like too much going on. Um, you don't want it to look busy on your pochi, you want it to look clean and sleek. So then you just go in and start at the top. And then I just make stitches all the way around. I know some people will do X's, some people have different techniques of how they actually sew the ribbon and elastic in the shoe. But I just like to go simple all the way around. So I go through, um, let's see, when I'm performing, I can go easily through like three or four pairs of sh uh, a week. Some people, I actually have gone through a pair show before. Um, and definitely the more you dance, obviously the more shoes you go through. During rehearsal weeks, I would say you can stretch it out like two or three pairs a week. But once again, just contingent on how much you're dancing. Definitely when I was just, first starting out on point, I did not go through that many pairs of shoes. Tried to make them last as long as possible with jet glue or shellac, and I'll show you um, how to use those as well. But they can be expensive too, so you definitely want to make them last as long as possible without getting injured. It's important to not dance on dead shoes, um, because if you're not feeling supported in your shoe, it's easy to compensate and then potentially get injured. So we don't want that either. So then I just go side, bottom, side. If you want it to be more secure, once again, you can go back across the top just to reinforce that. Um, but then when I'm done, I will add another stitch in there. Similar to the darning, what we did, uh, how we looped it through. 
just a few times. Loop, 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 pull. You're good. So then we do the other side, the outside ribbon. So before you start sewing, you just want to know what shoe you want to use for the right foot and what shoe you want to use for the left foot so that your ribbons can be appropriately measured um, for the right shoe for the left shoe. So same thing for the outside one. Just roll, match the elastic. And I do about equal distance. Um, outside ribbon and inside ribbon, so thumbs width or so from the seam. So this part definitely takes less time than the darning part. But as I said, darning definitely makes the shoes last longer, so even though it takes more time, I would say it sort of evens out in the end, makes it worth it, because they'll last a few extra days. So then we get to the last stitch and loop it a few times. Oops. So then we get to the last stitch and loop it a few times and pull it to not. And snip. So then, all we have left for this shoe. So then all we have left for this shoe, um, if you're crisscrossing the elastics, is to just finish attaching those. Um, and as I said, it's really just to keep the heel on your foot, the heel of the shoe on your foot. Um, so I just go maybe half a thumb's width outside the back seam. Um, I do have narrow feet, so once again, just measure to where you feel most comfortable. And then for this last one, I just make it pretty, the edge of the elastic pretty close to the edge of the shoe, and I just do one line across. Um, and you can go back and forth a few times to reinforce that if you need. Another thing I forgot to mention is when you are sewing, this just sort of happens naturally now, um, but when you're sewing, you want to try to avoid getting, um, so there are two layers inside the point shoe. There's the layer on the inside, this canvas, and then there's the layer on the outside, the satin. And you want to try to avoid going through both the canvas and the satin, you just want to go through the canvas. So you can see that the stitches on the inside here, you can't see them on the outside, so it's nice and seamless. That takes a little bit of practice, but once you get it, it's pretty easy. So same thing, just to finish off the elastics, a few loops, and pull.
and that is how you sew a point shoe. So just to finish it off, I always tuck it, wrap it, and admire my final product. Here it is. So to prolong the life of the shoe a little bit, um, there's jet glue and shellac. Both are great. Um, you can find this online or Home Depot or anywhere. Um, jet glue, I think you can get it at most dance stores, discount dance, any of that. So I think this is a new bottle. Um, so we'll open it up, the needle. Um, this can be very messy stuff, so just make sure you have a plastic bag or some tape or something to store it um, after you open it. Also try to avoid getting it on your fingers. Uh, it's not fun. It'll definitely come off, but it might take a few days. So I will sometimes use this before I start dancing in the shoe, just to reinforce the shoe. Um, but sometimes I'll just wait until the shoe has softened a little bit, not too much, um, to add some reinforcement. So you can do this in multiple places. I tend to do it in the tip of the shoe on the inside. Um, because that's where my shoe tends to soften the most, and then also along the inside right here, and sometimes in the box. I know some people like to do it along the outside right there. I don't because sometimes it can be a little bit slick, but whatever works for you. It's very personal. So to get it on the tip of the shoe, I'll fold that out, and it's okay if, they're, if they have already been sewn. You can still fold the heel back. And then I put my chin here to sort of look into it. It's a whole thing. And then add a few drops wherever I need it. Not too much. Really just take it drop by drop at first. And then just in the tip of the shoe. It dries pretty quickly. Um, sometimes I'll hold it down on the ground while it's drying just to make sure that it doesn't dip um, as it's drying in the tip. And then you can also hold it up, put the shoe on it, and then flip to add some on the inside wherever you need it. And then just wait for it to dry. Sometimes it'll seep through. That's okay if it does. Um, you can use scissors and sort of scrape it if it does go through the shoe. Um, it gets pretty hot too as it's drying, so just be patient, just need a few minutes and then it should dry and be ready to wear pretty soon after. With shellac, um, it's a little bit different. I use it for more of like the whole interior of the box. Um, I know that there's a way to get uh, shellac in rock form and then I think you can paint it uh, with a, like as a paste inside the shoe. I actually haven't tried that yet, but I've been meaning to. Um, but for like on the go, on tour, whatever, uh, you can just use this spray, maybe do it outside or where there's a window open, and then you can just spray the entire inside of the shoe all the way through, um, and then just leave it out to dry. Um, that's when you're like really in need of some longevity, and I always do shellac after I've already worn the shoes a little bit. Um, once again, whatever works for you. Just be careful with shellac. Um, sometimes shellac will cause your shoe to shrink a little bit. So you might want to hold it stretched out as it's drying. Um, but also don't worry about it too much because if you wear it after you've shellacked it, it'll eventually stretch out again. Um, just be aware that it might be a little bit uncomfortable the first time you wear them post shellac. So. So for our supplies and tools, um, obviously you will need your point shoes. I wear Freed's uh, because it's just the only shoe I've ever worn actually, but I do have a narrower foot and Freed tends to be a good fit for that. Um, I prefer a medium to long vamp, um, enough support on the sides, not too shallow. Um, you can get a heel pin sometimes if it's a little bit too short or you're in between sizes. Um, I like more, this is more of a V shape versus a U shape. Um, 
and I like to have, I mean this is a pretty tapered shoe, or maybe medium tapered shoe. Um, I try to be a little bit more square because I feel more supported when the tip is slightly larger, um, but the taper does create a really beautiful line. So it's really just about what fits your foot the best. Um, for supplies I use scissors, an X-Acto knife, be careful with this, uh, a lighter for avoiding the ribbon spring, a pencil for darning, two different types of thread. Um, one is a little bit thinner, I use this for ribbon and elastic, one is slightly thicker for darning. Um, obviously, ribbon and elastic. Uh, shellac and jet glue, sometimes after, obviously needles. Um, and then I also need a paper towel and a hand towel or a thimble. I just don't happen to have one. So, whatever works. Use these thin pro pads. They aren't full on toe pads, they're a little bit thinner. And just to go over how you tie the ribbons, um, I like to just pull the drawstring, double knot it, and then you'll cut these and tuck them in once you know that that's the correct positioning for you. And then you take the longer ribbon, the inside ribbon, you just crisscross it on the front of the ankle, crisscross it on the back of the ankle, Again at the front, and then they meet on the inside, double knot, and then tuck it in. Then you're ready to break them in. Make sure you break them in before wearing them. Um, but yeah, that's that.